Hi guys, this is Brick Ninja Productions, and today I'm doing a tutorial video, which is going to be how to do Lego gun flash effects, or muzzle flash effects, on stop motion studio, and this can apply to basically all stop motion, not just Lego, but I'm using Lego for this example. I did a poll on this on my community tab, of which animation tutorial you would like to see, and you guys mostly voted for the muzzle flash, so that's what I'm doing now. So here you can see I've got my Doom Slayer figure from my Doom animation, which you should definitely check out if you have a moment. And obviously he needs a gun, and this can just be whichever figure you're using in your animation. I'm going to go onto the camera, and you're also going to need some blue tack for this, as well as a piece to represent the flash. Probably an orange piece works best, I normally use this cone piece. You can also use flame pieces, because... It wouldn't look like a flame for the amount of time that they'll be on the screen for. Uh, so I definitely recommend any transparent orange piece. So let's start. So we're just going to take a first picture with him resting the gun. And we're just going to have him slowly raise it. I'll just turn my onion skin on. So we can see the previous frame slightly. That really helps. And so he's just going to slowly raise the gun. a bit of time just to give it a more fluid movement more than anything i'm shooting at 15 frames per second at the minute so you can apply this to whatever frame rate you are shooting at but i definitely recommend shooting over 10 because otherwise it looks a bit glitchy and slow because you can if you look back at some of my first animations they were shot at like five frames per second and to be completely honest they look terrible now because i've definitely improved quite a lot since then so anyway, now he's got the gun all the way up, what we're going to want to do is to change the lighting slightly. So I have a lighting system that can like be dimmed, so as you can see it gets darker and lighter. Now, if you're just using like a desk lamp for example, you're just going to want to turn it off completely. What I'm going to do with mine is dim it all the way down as much as possible. And then I'm just going to focus back onto the character. And you can see it still looks quite light on there. But now what I'm going to do is turn it back up. If you're using a desk lamp, you're just going to want to turn your desk lamp back on now. So now you can see it's kind of out of focus and the shot is really bright. So when once you've got this done, maybe you should have done this before because now you're not going to be able to see me. But I'm going to put the orange piece with some blue tack on the end of the gun to represent the flash. And then you're going to take another picture. Obviously that's really bright and you can barely see it. But since it's for one frame, it's not going to be noticeable in the actual end animation. And then what you're going to want to do is just focus your light again. And you're going to want a bit of recoil on the gun obviously because you want to make it look quite realistic. So just move it up a little bit after that shot. And then you can just move it up for a couple of frames afterwards. Just to finish it off. And then we can just slowly bring it back down to a resting position. Just a little bit at a time. And like I said, this tutorial can apply to anything so if you're using action figures for example you could use a bit of tissue paper instead of the orange lego piece on the end or you could use some of the orange lego power blast pieces because they're a bit bigger so they'd probably work for action figure still and you can use the same effect with the lighting and everything so it you can apply it to basically all your animations and you can slightly change it depending on what gun you're using Right, for this one example, it's a shotgun, so it's a bigger blast. But if you're just using a pistol, you might not want it quite as bright, just a small flash instead. So, yeah. That's okay then, and we can just click play to see what this looks like. I think that was pretty good. Like, not the best, but just for a short tutorial, 
I think it looks okay. And obviously, if you're adding a sound effect, you're probably going to want to edit the frame before. Just so, if you're using Stop Motion Studio, that is. You could also add your sound effect in your editing app or whatever. Anyway, guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. I really enjoyed making this, and I think I'll do more. I'll probably do the other options that were on the community poll. So, I'll probably be doing blood effects, as well as maybe a first-person stop-motion test. Uh, so, yeah, if you liked this video, guys, go check out my other stop-motions. I use effects like this all the time in them. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you.